Jay, can you take us through kind of you starting from scratch with a whole new system, start of spring with a new quarterback, a lot of new personnel. From there to where you are now, and uh, have you seen the, the progress you hope to, or is there a lot, a lot of work to do still? Uh, you know, I, I think there's always work to do, um, but overall, the the progress that they've made from practice one to practice 14 has been really good. You know, and we had the emphasis before spring break that we were just going to get the base install in for those eight practices, and then we were going to advance the install in the second half. And uh, uh, the kids have grasped it. They've done a really good job at uh, just coming to work every single day. It's been kind of a grind now. They went Wednesday and then Friday, Saturday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. You know, and, uh, it's back to back to back. You know, and uh, I know that they're not in the best uh, shape right now, and I know they're worn down and they're tired. But like they've they've had the you know, really, really the resilience to just keep working through and figuring it all out. And I've been very pleased with the progress that they've been making. But going back to what you're talking about with the work to do, we're still ways away from where we need to be. But um, I think they're having, a, they're grasping it and they're getting an understanding of what needs to be accomplished. When you, when you go back in your office and you watch tape, what are the specifics of things you're pleased with and, and a few things that you know you need to get better at? Yeah, you know, you look at like the QBs, for instance. You know, they, um, they haven't played much football. You know, and uh, so, you know, I, I, I do believe that, you know, everybody from is, is not making the same mistakes multiple times. You know, they're, they're improving and they're, and they're adjusting and they're adapting to it. But it gets down to the situational football and it gets down to a lot of the conversations that need to be had, you know, through the summertime and fall camp to, to get them ready for, you know, game situations and scenarios. And I think uh, Coach Sarman does a really good job at showing us a lot of different looks. Um, a lot of great discussions uh, that have been advanced in the QB room from zero pressures to, you know, soft leverage man and catch man and, and press man and like certain things that we need to have discussions about. And uh, we need as many of that, like many of those scenarios as possible for us to keep getting better as a unit and putting those quarterbacks in those positions to, to have an understanding of it. You know, so today we did two minute, you know, and we had a lot of, like there was a lot of uh, clock management stuff that we need to work on, you know, which is good. But we're at least having those discussions right now in spring. All right, but going back to, you know, just how they're progressing and they're not making the same mistakes, you know, uh, you know, twice, you know, they're learning from it. And uh, that, that means they're, they're trying to understand it. They're trying to improve. How would you grade uh, how Sam's played? Sam and Fernando, I, I, I think they've all gotten better. You know, a lot of it, too, is they're trying to fill out the personnel. They're trying to fill out me. It's a new offense. It's a new setting. Uh, uh, I, I feel like they've gotten a lot better. You know, uh, I think I've figured them both out. I've called two different games with those guys. Um, you know, and I'm figuring out their strengths and their weaknesses. And, and uh, when, you, when you go out there and you play, you put them in position to have success. But, like, in the meantime, you got to keep working on the deficiencies and what they need to improve on. And uh, But overall, I'm just really pleased with the QB room and then the development and then the approach that they've had so far in the spring. What percentage of your base playbook do you think you, that they've got down now? And, and how much does that need to grow before the regular season? Yeah, you know, I think um, I think we'd have we probably have about 50 percent of it in right now. And a lot of that is is uh, different presentations moving forward. You know, so like you know, you can do a certain run scheme, right, and then you can add motion to it. You can add condensed formations. You can add RPOs to it. You can add a lot of different things to uh, a certain look. But you know, the main thing is is we try to keep it very simple for the OI. Right? Make them just because there's so many moving parts of different fronts that they got to block. So just keep it simple for them and change up all the presentations. You know, and uh, we haven't done very many presentations. Um, yeah, there is some uh, short yardage packages and goal line and red zone stuff that we need to get in, in the game scenarios and all of that stuff that we need to work through. But for the most part, they have an understanding and the flow of how the game's supposed to go. What's the objective to, for, in your mind, tomorrow for, for your guys? Stay healthy, <laughs> number one. Um, I just want to go play. You know, like we're, you know, new, new scheme. Um, you know, televised game. We're not going to go out there and show, you know, all the things that we've been working on. Uh, you're going to see a lot of our base offense and just have to go execute. But I'm not going to sit there and try to scheme and show things that uh, maybe the opponent can look at in the future, you know, because, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of eyes on this game, you know, for uh, from a coaching standpoint, you know, which uh, I always did that as a coordinator. I'll do that. I'll always watch the spring games of every team, uh, you know, in the summer as a, as a study. But right now I just want to see him fly around, make plays, uh, are they doing the right things? Are they handing the ball off when they need to? Are they throwing the RPOs when they need to? Are they going through progression? Uh, are they taking care of the football? You know, like I just want to see a clean, uh, no pre and post snap penalties and just let them go out there and execute.
you played without a number of guys on offense, skilled position guys in particular, receivers, running backs. Yeah. How much different do you think you'll look come August? Uh, I think we'll look a lot different. You know, we've had some unfortunate injuries uh, in the previous season, you know, with uh, Mason Starling and Mason Mango. You know, I, uh, I still got some evals of those guys to get over summer and through fall camp. Uh, we're also going to add some more uh, numbers. Uh, you know, transfer portal opens up on the 15th. You know, you never know what happens with your current roster. And, you know, you know you're always trying to improve, uh, you know, any opportunity that you get. So we're going to look probably a lot different, you know, going into fall camp. That's why I'm not putting a lot of uh, installs in. Just get the base stuff in and let them like, have an understanding of that, and then we'll we'll figure out our identity of the players that we get throughout the summertime and and how uh, these guys respond back from their injuries uh, from last year. You still got just two scholarship quarterbacks on the roster. Mm -hmm. you expect to possibly pull one out of the portal. Yeah, we're gonna get another uh, QB. Um, we need to, you know, uh, just o -O -line. because. Yeah, we're probably we're always looking for a lineman. You know, I, I think with the the times of the transfer portal. Uh, you may have an opportunity that can help your team out, you know, and, uh, you know, there's O-line is a position that you can't really say no to, <laughs> you know, if a, if a six foot six, you know, 320 pound O-line has played a lot of college football and comes walking through the door, uh, you know, that's going to help us out, you know, and in general, but you may not get that opportunity. So you're always looking, you're always looking to improve and, um, and you're always trying to just keep developing your current roster. You said that tomorrow's almost kind of a program, a show but you've also got a lot of recruits coming in and mm -hmm. how important is it for you to sort of show them what you guys can look like? Yeah, I think it is. I think the, the tempo and the pace that we need to play with and um, just kind of uh, how we can spread the ball like all, all around the entire field, you know, and, and, and certain types of routes and short and intermediate routes and stretch the ball down the field, but also get the run game established a little bit. Um, don't plan on playing Jay out very often. I may not even play him yet, you know, because like, uh, just we all know what Jay is capable of doing. But uh, I just want to see these other guys have success so they can see other people. Like, you know, the recruits can see that a lot of people can have success in this offense, and there's a lot of opportunities to get touches. What traits will you be looking for in a portal quarterback? You know, that's, that's a tough question, you know, because it's – to me, it's the best available that you can get. You know, like you, you love to have, you know, more like I've always tried to get mobile quarterbacks or if, he, if he's a non-mobile quarterback, he's got to be like Davis Webb and have a really great arm. You got to have one or the other. You got to be mobile or you got to have an elite arm talent. So I'm really looking for just it, just anything and everything right now. And uh, you just take the best available that you possibly can because, um, you know, and then you adapt to them. You know, a lot too, you'd like to see if they have any experience, you know, and uh uh, that, that's something that I'm always trying to look forward, uh, like look forward to with when you're looking at quarterbacks, uh, is that they've at least been in games and played, uh, so they kind of get that initial, you know, I've, I've done it already, you know. So like right now, Sam and Fernando have never been in. Like you know, for, uh, Sam's been in a couple games, but not much, and Fernando's never been in one. So like you know, there's going to be the the first game nerves as well. So you'd like to get a guy that has some experience, and you know, you just take the best available from there. Is that a position where, <clears throat> with the portal? Guys, at quarterback, if you're not the starter, those guys tend to sometimes look for greener grass somewhere else. Is that yeah. more opportunity to find someone? Yeah, you know, I, there's a there's a lot of scenarios that I think you can look at when you're like looking at quarterbacks. You know, one, you know, like uh, they're a good quarterback, but they may be backing up or like a, a guy that's playing at a very high level and is, is already known. You know, and they're just looking for an opportunity to get on the field. Um, maybe that there's a starting quarterback that a transfer, you know, kid came into that school and uh, beat him out, you know, and he and he enters the portal, you know, afterwards, you know. So there's a lot of uh, kind of scenarios. Then there's the guys that are like have been really good, you know, talented wise and highly recruited, but they've never seen the field, you know. But like you know that what they're capable of doing, you know, they're going to be a little bit more development side of that. But uh, that's why you just got to look through every single scenario out there, look at all of them, do your research, you know, and then hopefully find a guy that's going to help our team out. It's going to be a busy time, though, on, on the portal? Oh, it's going to be a, a very busy time. I, I'm very curious to see how this happens because April 15th, it's just like they let the floodgates open and, and like we'll see what happens, you know. I think there's a lot of unknowns in every, like, you talk to a lot of coaches throughout the profession, you know, and they're, they're very curious about how these, these next, this transfer portal window from the 15th to the, really the first is going to, how it's going to look. So it's a two-week window. And uh, a lot of them, like, yeah, it's going to be interesting because, like, some are going to probably wait till after – uh, probably their spring games. Some have spring games on the 22nd. You know, a lot have it on the 15th. So you may see a first rush of a lot of people in. And you're already starting to see a little bit of it getting leaked out now with uh, with some with some certain kids. Is everyone pretty much done with their spring work? 
by the by May first. Yes, yes, yeah. Typically, you try to get that done. Uh, you know, our, our approach was to do it. You know, get done on the fifteenth, and that's the first day of the portal, and just see what happens. You know, like you got to be ready for anything. You know, and uh, uh, you know, with your current roster and you know anything else, so you just got to be ready for it all. Coming and going, right? Yeah, coming and going. Be ready for it. What's the power Um. I, I think reps, he just needs to keep repping and repping. Like, again, he hasn't played much football. All right? uh, and, you know, he was a, he was a receiver his sophomore year um, in high school, you know, and then he's been doing a little bit of that. But, like, he's been developing and, and growing as a quarterback. But he needs reps. He needs to be put in scenarios. He needs to understand matchups and, and breaking points and protection. And, and that's where I'm saying the more, you know, just ball that we can play. And what we've done this entire spring is, is that we haven't been scripted in practice. We've just been playing. And that's the only way that you can truly develop QBs and like, can accelerate their development is just throwing them in positions and, and understanding down and distance and matchups and leverage and technique. And, and, uh, and then also like, are you in four down territory or like we got, you know, what, what is your thought process? And I like, as, as many of those situations I can put him in, the better he's going to be. Have you seen uh, any strides this spring? A lot. I've seen a lot of strides. Um, I think the, the leadership and the command and everything, uh, uh, from practice one to practice 14 now has, has, has changed a lot. You know? When we look at him sometimes and he does not look like a finished product, is that to be expected? Yes, that is to be expected. You know, you, and, I, and, you know, quarterback play, you can always get better. You can always critique. Uh, you can always improve. But with him, you know, he's, he's such a dynamic, uh, you know, uh, his, his ability, uh, dynamic player, his ability to just extend plays. You know, you look at the two minute, I don't know if you watch the two minute, you know, and there's discussions that we need to have, but there was, you know, uh, I think there was around like 20 seconds left on the clock and he scrambled for like 15 seconds. You know what I mean? Like, it's like at that point, you just got to chalk it up and throw it away. And that's a good teachable moment for him, you know, uh, because he's got this confidence in himself and his ability to extend plays and make plays on his feet and throw on the run and uh, which you're going to see some exciting plays, but you're also going to see some things where you need to throw the ball away and don't take the necessary sack or don't force a throw. Um, and again, that comes from reps and just playing as much football as possible. Where are you at on that? Like, what what is four down territory in your mind? In the in you know, I mean, there's times it's obvious, but there's times where it's you know, I feel like you know, you're you're on 45. You know, on fourth down, a lot of times traditionally teams would punt, but now. Feel like a lot of times teams are going to go for it. Yeah, I just think that offense has improved. Like if you look at it, like the Pac-12, and like you know, I was here in '16. You just come back for another year, and you're kind of just evaluating the entire conference. Uh, this offense knows how to score some points, you know, and uh, uh, field goals aren't going to really win you games all the time, you know. And that's that's kind of the approach that you have to uh, really have a discussions with the staff before the game. You know, like we used to do it all the time, and like uh, in the Big 12, because there were some big. Uh, you know, some really good offenses with like Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield, those Oklahoma teams, you know, but there's also Oklahoma State was uh, playing at a high level and, uh, you know, TCU had their moments. Like, you know, there was a lot of really good offenses. And, you know, but if you go play like Iowa State, they're going to play a three high shell, keep everything in front of you from a defense perspective. They're going to huddle, they're going to move and milk clock. Kansas State was going to milk clock as well. I uh, like they were, they literally would count down the 25 second clock, the whole stands would. I, I, and try to milk as much clock as possible. Right? So you have to be efficient when you play the teams that are going to ball control. And where are you at in the game? Like, field goals will win you those games, you know, based off where it is. But if you're going to get into, like, playing Kyler Murray, we said any time we we're going to cross the 50, we're going for it on fourth down because, like, they're going to score fast and we've got to match it. You know, so it's also, you know, how they are as a team, their approach, their philosophy. But I, I'm with you. When you cross, like, the, really the 50-yard line, you should be in four down territory the entire time.